Let's take a look at three of NASA's most debated anomalies, cases that might explain why someone like Brian Cox could react with unease if confronted with certain archival material. One of the most talked about is the STS-75 Tether mission from 1996. During this experiment, the shuttle deployed a satellite connected by a 12-mile tether, which unexpectedly snapped as the tether drifted away. Cameras captured dozens of luminous disc-shaped objects moving nearby. What made the footage striking was how these shapes behaved. They pulsed with light, seemed to shift direction independently, and were recorded passing behind the tether line, suggesting they were not lens artifacts. NASA dismissed them as ice or debris illuminated by sunlight. Still, critics argue that explanation fails to match what the footage shows, the uniformity of the disks, their strange flight paths, and the impression of swarming motion. Ordinarily, Debris would follow orbital mechanics, not appear to move with intent. Another puzzling episode emerged during the Gemini 4 mission in 1965, when astronaut Ed White performed America's first spacewalk. The mission camera captured what looked like a structured, dark object hanging against Earth's horizon. Unlike random debris, this had straight edges and an apparent geometric form. What stands out is NASA's uncharacteristic silence on the matter. The agency typically catalogs and explains every anomaly. Yet in this case, nothing further was said. If it were an obvious reflection or space junk, why not clarify? The omission gave credibility to speculation that the image depicted something more unusual. The third case involves the so-called Apollo 20 revelations that hit the internet in 2007. Most experts agree the videos were fabrications but they gained traction because some of the lunar surface shots revealed terrain consistent with the Delport Crater region, an area confirmed later by legitimate lunar surveys. The footage included what appeared to be an elongated artificial structure buried in regolith. The person behind the release claimed it came from a secret joint U.S. Soviet mission that found a crashed spacecraft on the moon, though widely dismissed as a hoax. The odd part is NASA's refusal to officially respond rather than issuing a straightforward rebuttal. The agency remained completely quiet. That silence has fueled the perception that something about the material was worth ignoring rather than debunking. These examples highlight precisely the type of anomalies that might unsettle a physicist, phenomena that don't confirm extraterrestrials outright but resist tidy. Conventional explanations. They are the sorts of mysteries not easily folded into a neat science documentary. Then, there's the story tied to NASA's archival restoration project, sometimes called the Quantum Enhancement Incident. Between 2017 and 2022, NASA worked to digitize thousands of aging Apollo reels before the original films degraded beyond recovery. Google's Quantum AI division reportedly collaborated by applying advanced enhancement algorithms to stabilize, denoise, and sharpen millions of frames and almost subpixel level. This went far beyond ordinary digital cleanup. During processing of one such batch of lunar surface footage, technicians claimed that something unexpected appeared, a geometric shape that was completely absent from the analog versions. The implication is that cutting-edge computation revealed details the naked eye missed in the original reels, raising questions about whether some anomalies remained hidden in the archival record until technology advanced enough to expose them. What makes this all the more compelling is that the patterns detected during the enhancement process didn't resemble anything random or naturally occurring. One AI engineer involved in the project, who requested anonymity, claimed the discoveries were simply too symmetrical and too intricate to be passed off as normal lunar geology. The formations displayed right angles and repeated designs, features that rarely appear in untouched nature. The truly fascinating claim is that one of these enhanced frames may have surfaced in the BBC documentary segment that triggered Brian Cox's unsettled reaction. If that's the case, perhaps what startled him wasn't something deliberately hidden by NASA, but something even the agency itself hadn't realized existed until quantum-level AI brought it out of the footage. Consider this, the astronauts on the lunar surface saw only what the human eye could detect. We as the public saw grainy analog footage, but a machine trained at the quantum scale is capable of uncovering subpixel details, the faintest shadow, the tiniest thermal shift, the hidden geometry within noise. That leads to a much deeper question. Not what did NASA suppress, but rather what did NASA simply overlook until now? If AI can extract unseen data from old tapes, 
How many other pieces have recorded? History, whether scientific, military, or cultural, may contain knowledge invisible to us until technology exposes it? Under that lens, Cox's surprise is less about conspiracy and more about a scientist confronting data that undermines long-held assumptions about the moon. Adding weight to this line of thought, a Freedom of Information Act FOIA release in 2023 revealed internal NASA discussions that many argue the agency never intended to reach the public. Buried in a set of 2019 emails was a subject line that immediately generated intrigue. ISS feed UAP anomaly at frame 42. 000, the email thread described how one high-ranking NASA staffer advised colleagues not to include a certain segment in the official release. Warning that publishing this will cause unnecessary speculation. Recommend cutting segment 2.1 feet despite this caution. Mounting calls for transparency force the footage into public view. According to individuals close to the decision, the agency could no longer withhold it without risking accusations of concealment. The object in question was described in the correspondence as angular, metallic, and performing a maneuver inconsistent with basic orbital physics, executing a sharp 90-degree turn at significant velocity. Such an action would require propulsion methods far beyond human engineering. If Cox had early, behind-the-scenes access to this clip through his work with BBC or during visits to NASA's research facilities, his reaction instantly becomes logical. For scientists dedicated to educating the public, Seeing unexplained footage broadcast without a carefully framed explanation would understandably cause discomfort. This scenario highlights a fundamental tension within NASA itself, the struggle between maintaining scientific accountability and avoiding premature speculation. Should raw anomalies be released immediately to the public, or should they first be tested thoroughly behind closed doors? But these revelations are only part of a repeated pattern, records lost. Unexplained footage, and missions that slip through the cracks of official history. Researchers often call this the ejected from the archive problem. The most troubling example remains the Apollo footage gaps. Multiple investigators have carefully tracked how essential parts of Apollo 11 and Apollo 12 recordings simply vanished. These weren't trivial outtakes. They represented hours of pristine, high-resolution video from humanity's very first lunar landing experiences. In 2009, NASA admitted something shocking. The original Apollo 11 Slowskin broadcast tapes were erased and reused during a magnetic tape shortage in the 1970s and 1980s. Think about the implications, the defining technological and cultural moment of the modern era thrown away to conserve budget resources. The explanation sits poorly with many, especially considering NASA's reputation for flawlessly cataloging and protecting mission data. Adding fuel to suspicion are statements from former NASA data archivist Ken Johnston who has openly claimed he was ordered to destroy photo negatives containing unexplained lunar features. According to him, certain images of structures or objects were deliberately culled before release to the public. To make matters stranger, Apollo missions 18, 19, and 20 remain officially classified, despite their public cancellation being attributed to budgetary restrictions. If these missions allegedly never took place, what is there to classify? And why would irreplaceable tapes be carelessly erased if not to prevent reconsideration of what they might show? These weren't trivial camera rolls, they were priceless testaments to the most pivotal feat of human exploration. To this day, all we're told is a flat, we reuse them. A justification that raises more questions than it answers. You don't just misplace data of that magnitude, unless, of course, someone intended for it to vanish. The broader trend points less to accidents and more to intentional filtering of what the public gets to see from space exploration. This doesn't automatically mean erasing proof of extraterrestrials, but it could reflect an effort to manage perceptions around anomalies that don't align with established science. With this background, Brian Cox's visible unease begins to make sense. If material assumed lost or non-existent resurfaced on air during a BBC documentary he was presenting, his credibility as both a scientist and communicator might be jeopardized. His reaction may well have been genuine astonishment at encountering footage he believed was permanently removed from circulation. But why Brian Cox? Why did this moment concern him specifically? The answer likely lies in his unusual place within science communication. Cox is not merely a charismatic presenter. 
He's a trained physicist who contributed to particle research at the Large Hadron Collider, collaborated with leading labs, and visited numerous NASA facilities worldwide. His academic track record and global trust make him an unlikely candidate for fringe theories. That's exactly why his discomfort resonates. When someone with Cox's background, who has built his reputation on rational explanations and evidence-based teaching, appears troubled by NASA material, it lands differently than if the same reaction came from a sensationalist YouTuber, according to Insider's link to production. Cox formally requested the removal of a specific sequence from the 2024 Expanding Cosmos documentary series. Network executives, however, dismissed the suggestion, and the clip made it to air. That segment contained the enhanced tether experiment footage. The very one behind is now well-circulated reaction. This is striking because Cox rarely wavers from skepticism. He has openly ridiculed moon landing conspiracies and dismissed supposed extraterrestrial corpses as implausibly human in form. His identity is grounded in cutting through nonsense with science. So when he falters, when he visibly recoils, it suggests a moment of honest scientific anxiety. It's also worth noting the timing. NASA has recently begun formalized investigations into unidentified anomalous phenomena, UAPs, lending official legitimacy to areas once brushed aside. The scientific establishment is now more cautiously willing to address mysteries without ridicule. Cox's hesitation seems to coincide with this shift, the growing recognition that not all anomalies can be ignored forever. What makes this narrative compelling isn't simply what Cox might have seen. But what his reaction reflects, the uneasy balancing act between measured, cautious science and the demand for transparency in an era where technology strips away layers previously thought unknowable. Of course, our media environment complicates all of this. Every day the internet churns out AI-generated voices, fabricated leaks, and staged illusions. Skeptics are quick to dismiss odd videos as deep fakes. Yet that does not mean every anomaly is fake. Often the most telling moments are the ones that vanish quickly, clips pulled offline, archives updated, or spontaneous remarks erased after the fact. When things disappear that fast, it sparks legitimate debate over why they were cut. That doesn't always imply conspiracy. Sometimes institutions act out of caution, concerned that confusing data might be misinterpreted. But it does reveal a reality of the digital age. The truth can surface only briefly before access shuts down. Cox's on-camera reaction was significant precisely because it was spontaneous and authentic, captured live, without polish, before committees could sanitize it. It came from someone with everything to lose professionally and nothing to gain from drama. Before wrapping up, it's important to anchor this in factual context. NASA actually maintains one of the most transparent public media policies of any federal institution. Official guidelines state that almost all NASA photos, videos, and recordings fall outside copyright restrictions within the United States. And by design, the agency encourages wide sharing of its material for research and education. And Brian Cox himself? He's been outspoken on this very issue publicly dismissing fake lunar landing theories and once mocking deniers as a colossal knob during the Apollo 11 anniversary. His career rests squarely on championing science against pseudoscience, which is why his visible discomfort in this isolated moment feels worthy of close attention when so-called alien bodies were showcased in Mexico. Brian Cox quickly dismissed them as far too human-like to plausibly be extraterrestrial and remarked that simple DNA testing could resolve the issue. Many suppose space anomalies follow a similar logic. There are often grounded physical explanations once the data is examined properly. Space is a harsh environment for imaging, extreme temperature changes, cosmic radiation striking sensors, and the way light refracts across lenses and protective panels all contribute to unusual visual effects. A still frame might look strange or otherworldly, but when the footage is studied across multiple frames or from different camera angles, the mystery frequently disappears. NASA, in fact, has made a point of keeping its data public. The International Space Station regularly streams live around the globe. And in September 2023, the agency even held an open briefing on unidentified anomalous phenomena. That session included the release of a full report and the introduction of a scientific framework for analyzing UAPs. 
complete with a strategy for using data and technology to build real understanding. Meanwhile, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter continuously produces and shares high-resolution lunar imagery, including far-side mapping. A case in point, in June 2024, it published detailed shots of China's Chang'e 6 lander and its impact scar. What to an untrained observer might look like an unexplained bright flash was clarified as the craft itself openly documented and released by NASA without concealment. So the lingering question is this, did Brian Cox really say what people think he said? Did he encounter something the rest of us weren't meant to? The truth is we may never have a definitive answer, but the fact remains that the footage exists. The patterns are verifiable, and the analytical tools available now are revealing more than ever before. If NASA's own AI enhancement initiatives are surfacing anomalies hidden in decades-old recordings, the discussion changes. It's no longer about intentional obfuscation, it becomes about readiness. Are we prepared to face what enhanced science uncovers when it pulls detail from data too complex for the human eye? The narrative may not be one of alien craft or shadowy cover-ups at all, but rather the human condition itself. Our biology and our instruments have limits, and only when technology advances do we notice what was silently present the whole time. Breakthroughs in quantum computing and artificial intelligence are now peeling back layers of archived science, illuminating details missed entirely by earlier generations. Perhaps what Cox was reacting to wasn't proof of alien life, but the sobering reminder that science is provisional, that new tools will forever force re-evaluations of old conclusions. To a scientist deeply committed to clarity and objectivity, such a moment can feel both unnerving and awe-inspiring. That duality, the unsettling and the exhilarating, is likely at the heart of why one of the world's most rational voices might visibly hesitate when caught off guard by enhanced footage during a live broadcast. Stay tuned for more explorations of hidden science, reanalyze space archives, and what insiders are beginning to uncover. Don't forget to engage, because when the next revealing clip emerges, you'll want to be among the first to confront what it shows. What do you think really made Brian Cox pause?